Hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors, wherever you are in the world. Oh, happy Friday to one and all. Ah, yes, today's podcast is with a very fine gentleman. Uh, I've got to say he is a quite a motivational chap, a positive uh, to the end, is with Chuckus. Uh, who is a, a gentleman who owns a property development company uh, for social housing out in Kent. Uh, so yes, uh, the conversation covered a number of different areas, uh, what he's also doing to help the community out in Kent, and, and plus uh, with these trying times. Uh, so please enjoy this podcast with Chuckus and I, and yeah, we'll definitely look forward uh, to seeing you on the next one. So sit back, enjoy, and thank you, my friends. Thank you, my life warriors, and have a great day. Peace. Hello, my friends. Hello, my life warriors, wherever you are in the world. I do hope you're having a good day, especially in our lockdown times. Uh, today, I have the honor, the pleasure uh, to introduce uh, a gentleman I've known now for maybe 18 months um, from our LinkedIn times. Um, I got to know him, first of all, when he was doing his 90-day exercise challenge. Every day, there'll be a different video of him him up ready to go i i have like over that time it was like oh my lord definitely someone i needed to connect with so i have the pleasure to introduce uh chuckus today how are you sir i'm awesome we were i'm absolutely awesome absolutely buzzing from your from your intro you know uh, <laughs> and, uh, wow you made my day you know right. you made my day so no it's um, it's a pleasure it's a pleasure um speaking to you today you know i've been seeing you as well we've connected what 18 months back yeah you know, and um having time to chat to you today um i think uh, wow it's a pleasure it's a pleasure and thanks for the intro thanks oh, for the no, intro you're no making worry. me blush now <laughs> <laughs> no i'm happy i'm happy yes. to give you such a good introduction because yes, yes as i say like you are definitely one of these people on linkedin who has been a definitely a positive spark uh, yes. like basically as i say uh, when i first saw you it was about the 90 day uh, like exercise challenge. Um, yes. Like, yeah. Over in Kent. So yeah. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. Apart from the sort of ninety day challenge, what is it you do out in glorious Kent? As they um, say. Um. Thanks for that question. I mean, what? what so pretty much. Um. Uh, as you know, I mean, I'm, I'm an entrepreneur. I've got a um, property business in um, in Kent. Mm -hmm. uh, we provide um, accommodation for um, construction companies coming to work to work in Kent. We provide accommodation for film companies coming to film in Kent. We provide accommodation for business travelers. We provide accommodation for um, hospitals, um, key workers. Mm -hmm. teachers coming into the Kent town to, um, to provide education um, to, to teach in schools. So pretty much we're an accommodation provider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're solely based in Kent and um, we just provide accommodation for um, accommodation solutions for businesses and for, for individuals, really holiday makers coming into Kent to come and stay with us as well. So that's pretty much what I do in a nutshell. Yeah. Okay, and with this uh, current business you're doing, um, mm. how long have you been doing this for? Okay, I've owned. Um, I'm actually going. It's actually going to be six years on April the sixth. Um, so I have, I've I've had it for about six years, and um, but like I said, um, with this current business, six years. But um, mm. I've done other businesses as well. You okay. know, so mm -hmm. I've done other things like. Um, I've, I've been in the dot com era. I worked. I created. Um, I was in the dot com era. I worked in fine. I worked in the city, mm -hmm. and um, I did. Um, I did a, a bit of sales as well. You know. So um, so this business has been my pretty much my longest, which is six years. Yeah. So Ooh. I've been in the business for about six years, and um, I've loved every moment of it. Yeah. Excellent. And um, basically. Uh, like yeah, it's coming up to your six like sixth birthday in this yep. company in oh three days time. So three days what, time, that's yeah, right. Yeah, three days. Mm. Um so what made you decide property? Because you did other things, but what brought you to the whole property? I think with side? property, I, I think with property it's um 
I got um, it, it's the connection. Properties mm. uh, for me is a connection with people. Yeah, like I said, it's the best thing I've ever done because it it property has emotions. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I'm dealing with people. You know, I'm, I'm I'm meeting people. I'm providing people with houses. I mean, um, four days four days ago when they we had a lockdown, um, mm. the the lockdown where a lot of the hotels um, shut down. Yeah, and uh, within the area, I mean. Uh, there was a lady who came to me, um, house had burnt, uh, she, her house was burnt about three months ago. She'd been in the travel lodge. I mean, I placed her in accommodation, you know, and um, you could see the light. I mean, she had four children and you could see the joy on her face, you know, mm -hmm. and that was wow. You know, that's the feeling, you know, it's a lovely, lovely feeling that you mm -hmm. get when, you know, you are helping people find uh, a roof over their head. You know, like I always tell people, the next thing after food, it's a it's shelter. Yeah. Mm. Everybody mm. needs shelter. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, you know, once you have a comfortable home, people are happy, you know. And for me, the joy of, of making people happy, you know, that's my passion. That's where I find the passion of housing. There's a connection with people, you know. And I, like I said, I'm a people's person. Yeah. Mm. And that's mm. where um, my values come out, you know, helping people and um, providing a roof for them so that's my passion really yeah mm -hmm. and with regards to like your passion connecting people like to basically properties and stuff like this um yes. like you mentioned the lady who like just now whose house like burned down three months ago and yes. like you placed her because of the travel lodges cl like closing would yes. you say uh she was one of the most memorable people you like placed or oh wow that? that's a very good question i mean i i can tell you i mean let me give you the, let me give you the that no that's not the most memorable picture um, story mm -hmm. the most memorable story was at mcdonald's yeah. McDonald's. Yes, at McDonald's, and I'll tell you the story. Okay. Um, I was I was at McDonald's at the at the queue. Yeah. Um, me and my boy, so we got some McDonald's, and um, I I sat on my on my table, you know, eating the McDonald's. The next thing I um the uh, McDonald's staff brought um some food to me. I said, "Someone's got you this." I said, "Well, who's got me that?" Oh, I didn't order it. So, mm. no, someone's bought you that. The next thing this lady walks back next to me and said, do you remember me? I said, no. She said, um, remember me and my little girl when my, which is not, I don't know why it's, it's, it's a house getting burnt. <laughs> okay, the story, yeah. you know. I said, do you remember me? I said, no, I can't remember you. She said, remember the day I, I, I came out of hospital when um, my, my, my house got burnt and my, you provided me with, with accommodation. I said, wow. I said, no. She said, yes, you remember me. I said, well, I cannot believe this. Yes, I do remember you. And honestly, tears streamed down her face. And mm -hmm. honestly, I did have a bit of a tear, you know, because when I saw the little girl next to her, she's now a big girl. And I thought, yeah. wow, that, you know, I just told her, I have to give you a hug. You know? uh -huh. I mean, for the kindness that she showed, you know, and mm. she, she was so grateful. Me to have bought me a free McDonald's. <laughs> I mean, that was awesome. That's the most memorable for me. That's yeah. the most memorable thing for me. Uh, story I can, I can say. Yeah. I see. How long ago was that? Oh, well, that was probably about. Um, that was probably. About, I would probably say about three years ago. Oh. Yeah, that's about three years ago. Yeah, three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it must be. Uh, it must be quite. Uh, it must be quite a sight to see your impact within the community. Oh, big like, time. Um, like, oh. Yeah. Sorry. No, I was going to say, it must be very interesting to see your impact within the community and how you basically helped, like, help people, like, put their lives together. Uh, oh, big, big time. Totally, big time. I mean, one, one of the passions that I always say is that um, you, as a business or as an entrepreneur, my, my ethos is that you, 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 where it, where you sow, you plant your seeds back. You don't sow mm. and don't plant seeds back. You always have to plant seed backs, yeah. And one of the th biggest uh, thing we're doing now with, with this period of the lockdown is the food brigade. So I started the food brigade, and what the food brigade pretty much does is that we buy food. Which, so with any with, the, with a percentage of the income we get in the business, mm -hmm. we go out and buy food. We take it out to families in the community that are struggling. 
and we 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 give them food, we give them food vouchers, you know, um families with little kids that can't um that they can't queue out on at the supermarket, you know, we we contribute back to them. Yeah. So we've mm. even said that yesterday I I I'd even said that um one of the houses that we've got, you know, I put it out there that if anyone wants to contribute to the local hospital, just give us a just 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 contribute to us it, yeah. And everything that we get from that house that they, we we offer to the hospital for free, we, we we give it back into the food bank and we buy more food, yeah, for people, yeah, because these are trying times. Oh, and like I said, um, the community is the hub of what we are, what we do, yeah. We 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 we, the, we sow from the community, so we've got to plant back in the community. Mm. So I'm a big believer in that we give back to the community, and our food bank is. Uh, it's a big machine for us to give back to the community as well. So as much as we give housing, we also give other things back as well. Yeah. Yeah, no, but this is this is what I'm talking about. This is an example of doing something positive, like being very positive. Mm -hmm. Like the yes. food brigade. Um, like I don't like how long have you been running that food brigade? The food for? brigade was only started for about, I mean, probably about four or five months. So it's not a long time, but obviously <laughs> uh, I've been a big um uh, are you gonna say? No, no, I was gonna like basically no, no, carry on, carry on. Yes, no, so I've been um I've I've I mean remember the last the last 90 day challenge that I, I did that was yeah. for the for the food bank, yeah. Yeah, so I've always been doing things for the food bank, but the food brigade is now a personal mission by myself, yeah, where pretty much I'm saying, you know what, I'm I'm gonna do it myself, I'm gonna um I'm gonna get food, I'm gonna um, give to people that require food, help families that need that, that are struggling to buy food, especially in this period. So, so we then intensify our our our, um, our mission around this period because obviously the supermarkets are are pretty much um, the food banks depend on the food supermarkets, yeah, and mm. restaurants. And you can imagine now food food is being rationed. Yeah. yeah so we have to kind of so we're doing more now so more we're going out and doing more unlike before yeah where it's once a month or we do it um, as much as we can but now we're committing ourselves to giving 100 percent at uh, at this tax yeah. mm. no it must no it must be it must be very challenging uh we're like well the supermarkets for about two weeks ago like you walked yeah. into a supermarket there was literally nothing there uh and then basically for restaurants to sort of oh like pretty much overnight uh just disappear uh yeah uh it's one of those things if you said this six months ago no one would believe you uh like basically if, if you said oh yeah there'll be like people queuing for this toilet paper that like everyone will be locked down and like yes uh, it's just one of these things uh, our current situation has brought on yes stuff which you couldn't even write down in the film script like, no it's crazy isn't it yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, but with the food brigade um i'm no doubt it's most probably needed more than ever right now um have you found in the last uh, couple of weeks things have improved uh getting that together no um things have actually gone things have actually gone a bit um heavy because i mean previ i mean as of the last week we could get we could get trolleys and walk into the supermarkets easy yeah you know and um there was no one uh, we're letting two or three people in this week they let two people in three people in you know into mm. the supermarkets so you can tell now it's getting more stringent yeah i mean unlike before when we walked in we just bought what we want we left we went again bought what we want mm. we left now you're you're three people in one in the super. So you can imagine the queues outside. Yeah. yeah? So um, so what we've done is that, okay, what we, we, we've said we will do, we will give food vouchers out, yeah? So we'll buy food vouchers and, and, and give um, to people so that they can go and buy food, maybe in the local um, in the local shops, around the, the corner stores as well, yeah? Mm. So we've just adopted the strategy to say, you know what, um, rather than have uh, people wait with the kids on on accused how can we do this better which the food vouchers have come in hand you know so uh so it is it is getting tougher it is getting tougher i'll be honest with you yeah? mm. and uh but we've got to find ways of how best we can um we can we can work this and how best we can make things work um easy really yeah yeah 
No, no. Adapt, like as they say, adapt or die. Uh, with their sort of like even totally, totally, totally. And totally. like basically, like okay. Um, hopefully the food. Like, is there a case of with the food vouchers you just go online and you get those food vouchers? No, the food vouchers. I'll be very honest. With you, food vouchers are pretty much like cash. Yeah, uh, cash in an envelope. <laughs> yeah. Mm. So we just put money in an envelope and put it through the letterbox. Yeah. And they just go and just buy what they want. Yeah. Mm. So, um, so really, um, that's how it works, you know. So, I mean, that gives an opportunity to say, you know what, I want to go into the local shop and just buy something from the local shop. I want to go Tesco's. Yeah. Mm. So they're not restricted to one shop. Yeah. So we just put cash in an envelope and just, and just put it through the letter box. Yeah. Okay, that's great. No, no. Um, with, so with regards to, like, as you, how can I say, you are heavily involved in the community. Uh, yes. In Cambridge. Like, in Kent. Wa- in, sorry, in Kent. Well, I'm a, no, I'm thinking <laughs> you about myself. Yeah, you lived in Cambridge. You lived in Cambridge, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, heavily involved in community in Kent. Uh, yes. With regards, like, I remember, like, seeing on your LinkedIn, um, yes. it must have been just around about December time, maybe a little bit before, you you got a scout leadership position? Or? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So, like, basically, uh, what, like, how is that affecting your scout troop with this lockdown? I mean, the scout and... troop, uh, I know, I, mean, I miss my boys. I mean, the scout troop has kind of, like, um, there's no, I mean, it's been cancelled now. Our scout mm-hmm. meetings have been cancelled. Um, um after this um this this lockdown so pretty much everyone's at home you know and um, but before that i mean the, the scout group was another um, thing that i got involved in i love it i love it i mean thursdays whatever i'm doing i shut down at five o'clock and i head to my scout group because i know there are 10 to 15 kids that depend on me to turn up on that day you know and um, it's an awesome program for what we do in the community as well that's pretty much um, helping the, the kids. And, you know, we do a lot of things, going to the Sikh temple, going to the local police station, going to um, the park, you know, um, doing campfires, you know, teaching kids, uh, drawing, play group, um, acting, drama, you know, it's, uh, I mean, when I'm there, I feel like a kid again, you know what I mean? You know, it's like, wow, I'm a kid again. I love it. I don't think about work, don't think about anything. But, you know, but when I see the smiles on the kids' faces and when they say, you know, well, thank you for when I'm leaving, you yeah. know, that's, yeah. that's the joy. That's the passion, you know what I mean? You know, and I feel giving back to the community in that way as well, that's another passion of mine, you know, and mm. um, I love it. I love it to bits, yeah. Yeah. That- I've got to ask, like, wh- like what, like, what have you always had this sort of driving force to, like, basically, like, you know, what I mean, give back to the community, not like, um, be quite selfless in many regards. No, um, I, 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 um, okay, I've always, I've always had a drive. I mean, as an, as an entrepreneur, you've got to have drive. Yes. Yeah. So I've got a, I've got a naturally inbuilt drive, yeah. Uh, so if uh-huh. you put me on a challenge, I go for it, you know. Okay. I don't, um, you know, I give it a hundred percent and I go all out for it, yeah. So that's my natural. I'm I'm naturally hungry, natural drive, yeah. But with regards to the passion of community giving, I I got um, a friend of mine got me involved in it, yeah. Mm. I got a friend of mine who does a big charity stuff, and he 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 sends um, he builds health centers in Africa. Yeah. So it takes health centers in places that are unreachable, you know, in mm. Africa where, you know, people don't, I mean, you cars don't even go there, you know, you have to <laughs> on a boat and, you know, to the, you know, walk a few miles, you know, yeah. and um, he builds health centers. And um, I saw him doing this quite a while back, four years back, and I got really inspired, you know, mm. really got inspired. He went to South Africa, Ethiopia, Nigeria. You know, building this this health centers, helping these people. And I thought, I've got to contact this chap. So I contacted the guy. And he came to see us in Kent and um, told us about what he did. So and I said, why don't we try? Look, why don't we? Because I was raising some funds. I said, why don't we do the thirty day? Why don't we do a thirty day fitness challenge? And I said, wow, okay, that's awesome. Why not? <laughs> so we started. We did a thirty days fitness challenge. Uh, I think about five of us. You know. And um, we raised some funds for for the charity after the thirty days challenge, and you know, and it was it was the most exciting feeling I've ever had. Honestly, 
you know, even at, in my journey as an entrepreneur, you know, yeah. the feeling of, of I've helped someone, I've helped someone create a health center, you know, that is helped thousands of people, you know, that joy was so much. And I thought, I've got, I can't stop now, you know, I've got to make a difference in where, from where I, I am, you know, that, that the old saying, charity begins at home, you mm-hmm. know, and I thought to myself, let's do something in Kent, you know, that's where the food bank started. And um, I thought, we've got to make a change. We've got to make a difference. And that's where the passion for the food bank yeah, started. Yeah. Okay. That, no, that's great. That's fantastic. Now, yes. one of the, like, I'm curious, like, you, mem- you mentioned e-commerce. Yes. Like, like, like before you came to, like, Kent. Yes. Not Cambridge, yes. Kent. Kent. Yeah, that's right. Kent, <laughs> yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. What so what was the like what was the sort of stepping stone like to get like what were you doing in e-commerce before? Okay, um, so so what happened was that um, so I worked in the I worked in the city mm. and um, did my sting in the city and uh, the dot com boom started. Yeah. Oh, okay, thought, yeah, going way myself, back. What can I? How can I get you? Get involved? You know. So. Um, so I had several things. I built. Um, I gave my thing in. I mean, I built one of the biggest, um, one of the biggest um, watch, um, luxury watch website called Watchsmiths. Yeah. So mm. we used to sell like the. Um, we sold the Mont Blancs. We sold the um, the tags. We sold the Raymond Weld watches on this website. Really amazing website. So I built that. Um, I also built uh, another big website um, selling uh, men's clothes, men's shirts. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so I did a lot of men's shirt. Um, Charles Tyright, um, um, T.M. Lewin, um, T.M. Lewin. Trying to remember the others. Um, I did a lot of um, English um, English shoes. Yeah. Yeah. So there was this there was this niche where I mean, if you know, a lot of Americans, especially the Germans, for some reason, the Germans were my biggest market. Yeah. Oh. They bought a lot of English shirts, Charles Tyrite. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's one of my heroes as well, you know, and um, and a lot of English shoes. We sold a lot of English handmade English shoes made in Northam- Northampton. Yeah. Oh. They, that was that niche of everyone wants to wear um something unique you know it's it's british it's handmade you Mm. know it's got that um craftsmanship british craftsmanship so i did that as well then um i also um then i worked for another Mm. company called um conway stewart and they're no longer in existence so we Mm. sold um luxury pen they were just they were there's a it's a hundred year old uh, british company it's probably Mm. more than a hundred now when i started you know, and uh, they sold um, luxury pens. I mean, pens range from five hundred pounds to ten thousand um, okay. pounds. Luxury pens online. I did that as well. Um, they brought me in to come and um, shift to those pens, and that was that was a first. You know, yeah. And, uh, that was also a challenge because I've never shifted a, a product of ten thousand pounds online. You know, <laughs> and you can imagine that was a big challenge. But uh, well, it was awesome. So that was kind of my sting um, on the dot com side until mm. obviously the market went haywire and uh, literally everything just went down. And uh, pretty much that's when I moved into property. Yeah. Wow. No, wow. Like this is the thing. Like uh, saying, uh, going from sort of like shirts, luxury pens, and like luxury watches to property, like that's. It's quite a leap. Um, it was like, a big shift. Yeah. Like, big shift. With regards to the website for the watches, like, uh, what were some of the greater challenges uh, getting that set up? I mean, one of the great challenges was that, obviously, we were working with a team in um, the, the developers who are based in India. Okay. So um, having to, to speak to uh, a lot of developers in India um, for a complicated kind of um, watch site, yeah. I mean, that's that was a job, you know. <laughs> that was an absolute job, you know, on its own. But um, like I said, we we still delivered it, and I was working with about six other people. Mm-hmm. I worked with six, so we started it at, with six six entrepreneurs. Yeah, we started yeah. six, but only two ended. Only two went went on to the end. Yeah, me and another chap. Yeah. So there were only two that that took it out to the end. So it just shows tenacity. We stuck with we we stuck with it. Yeah, the rest mm. couldn't stick with it. You know, 
And that's why I say as an entrepreneur, you will go through your ups, you go through your downs. You just have to stick with it and just be hungry, you know. And um, so that was a challenge, obviously, trying to mm. build a big site like that and trying to make things work, coding behind the site. Yeah. All of that stuff, that, that was a big job. Mm. Now, I think many a person when they like when they think of entrepreneur, like mm. they go like especially uh, I would say especially before everything what's going on now. Yes, uh, they, yes. Like, they see the they see the upside and they fail to see the whole sort of work, the hard work, and climb behind it. Totally. And totally. like the amount of times I've heard friends talk about other people and go, yes. yeah, they they were they were lucky. Don't get me wrong. There's sometimes an element of luck to yes. situations where it can't come up, but yes. if you're not putting that hard work in to Big make time. that, like take full advantage of that opportunity. Big time. Yeah. You, Big time. You've got to work it. You know, you've got to work it. Like I was telling you, um, I don't know if I told you, Muiwa. I mean, one of the things that, I mean, during, before the lockdown, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I had a, I had a team coming from um, nurses and doctors coming from, uh, from India. Yeah. And um, all, all ready to set, got my, all my guys, we got all the houses ready. Mm. And um, in India, I think it was last week, the, Mr. Moody, the prime minister now said, um, lockdown, no one's <laughs> going anywhere. <laughs> so you can imagine we had prepared everything ready. Yeah. To, they had paid us money, all ready to go. Guess what? We had to return the money back. Mm. Yeah? And in, in hospitality, what you, te- you tend to do is that once people pay you money or in business, you use that money to do other things, do you know what yeah. I mean? To, to try and make some more money, you know? Yeah. So you have to return that back, that money, you know? And you can imagine, and um, we had some group of engineers come in last week and we got all the houses. I don't know if you saw me on LinkedIn showing that we, uh, my team getting all the houses already for mm. a group of engineers. Um, uh, to come in on Monday. Monday, they text me and say, sorry, we're not coming again. There's been a lockdown. So you can imagine we took yeah. another hit. Yeah, and, no. But um, you just can't give up. You just no, can't give no. up. You just have to keep fighting, keep saying, you know what, we've got to keep going. We've got to keep going. But the interesting thing was that, and the irony of the story is that the houses we prepared for the engineers, you know, um, I got this, yeah, I was, I was got it. I mean, because if you lose business, in, especially in this period, it is, it's, it's a TKO, you know, it knocks you out, you yeah. know, and um, um, luckily, and that's why I say you've got to persist. There's got to be one way or the other. I mean, the travel lodge now is short, yeah, and we took a, we, we took a bit of that business, you know, mm. so they sent a bit of business to us, you know, so in a way, we lost that business, but we gained in the other end as well. Yeah. So it's a uh, it's a balancing act. It's just uh, you just got to be optimistic. Yeah. Mm. No, I think yeah, as you say, it's a balancing act, and I've seen a number of companies sort of pivot and move with the sort of trying times we're going through right now. And um, I think the tricky thing I think people are finding right now is kind of everyone like everyone saying June, June. That's when things are going to yes. come back. But like as we're sort of like going through it, it like I don't know. Uh, maybe it's my point of view or anything like this. It it feels like June now is a little bit more optimistic than. Yes. So I feel like it, it. If they went July or August, all mm-hmm. of a sudden, I think that might be more in the realistic time frame. But because yeah. no one can really say this is going to happen like this. Yes. There's that sort of uncertainty like air of uncertainty which i think is throwing off quite a few people right now very much so mm. no but yeah you're going to say no totally i totally i totally agree with you because i mean obviously i mean everybody's saying we hopefully we should be back to normal in june but what mm. you've got to understand is that i mean for example for us in hospitality in in is that i mean if we're back to if the hotels open in june and everything starts going in mm. June, you've got to get trying to convince people, people to come back to you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You've got to be able to convince people to say, you know what, you um, come back to the business, come back to, come back to, um, come back to where we are. You know, come back to to using us. That's a job. Mm. That's a job mm. on its own. You know. So yes, we open in June, but do we start getting business straight away? You know. Yeah. Uh, it's it's got it's gonna be a journey. 
mm. you know, it's yeah. going to be a challenge. No, but like this is the thing. I would say um, if we got a, a few more people like yourself, like with some positive energy going that mm -hmm. way, I think we'll be able to bounce back strong. Uh, yes. Won't happen straight away by all means, but totally. yes. But totally. give it a good, say, three months after when it ends. Yes. Uh, six months, I think, yeah, things will be yes. starting to go back in the right direction, as they say. Totally. Totally, yeah. totally agree. Totally agree. You see, um, we just need a lot of positivity around, you know. Mm. I mean, every day we've got to be optimistic because, you see, when you're optimistic, you attract good energy. Yeah. And like I said, for me now, um, what we are thinking, uh, the, myself and the team, is what can we do differently? What can we, there must be another avenue of mm. attracting more business. Yeah. I mean, for example, with all the construction, um, the construction firms are still going. Yeah. Yeah. They're still yeah. working. So our aim now is to attract the contract the construction business. Yeah. So we're looking at construction business to attract them and say, hey, come and stay with us. You know, we can work things out when mm -hmm. you're in Kent, keep the economy in Kent going by creating um, accommodation for yourself, you know. And um that's what we're doing now, you know. We're adapting to saying what can we adapt? How can we adapt to the new market now, the new scenario going on? Yeah. Mm. So it's a lot of adaptation. That's what we're doing. Uh, perfect. Perfect. Uh, with regards to like with regards to where you would like to see your business, I know this yes. might be like in a year or two's time, what yes. like, what do you think? Uh, like, what do you think your ideal goals would be? I think the ideal goal for us will be to be um, to be um, the the largest um, provider of, of housing um, in in Kent. Yeah. You know, um, across Kent. You know, um, so we want to be in Canterbury. We want to be in Seven Oaks. We want to be in. Um, we want to be in. Rochester, we want to be in Chatham, we want to be in uh, Gravesend, we want to be in Dartford. So we pretty much want to be the, the number one um, accommodation provider in Kent mm -hmm. and um, have a recognizable brand that when you think of accommodation, you think of Kent housing. Yeah, that's what we want to be. Yeah, we want to be the number one recognizable brand for, uh, for housing. Yeah. Solutions, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Um, like a bit on the fitness side of things, what yes. was the most challenging thing? <laughs> I like that. Yeah, on the, the most on the, the most challenging thing. Yeah, the most yeah. challenging one. <laughs> I like that question. The most challenging one was the ninety days challenge. Yeah. yeah, the ninety days challenge because I've never done it. I've only done the thirty days challenge. Yeah. And um, with the 30 days challenge, um, that was easy. You know, they, they say in 30 days, you create a habit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we knocked the 30 days quite, quite easily. But what I had, what happened with, so we, we went on to the 90 day challenge. And I'll tell you something. I, we, when we started the 90 days challenge, yeah, we said, mm -hmm. um, I, I must be honest, I gave up halfway. Yeah. But I'll tell you how I continued. I said, hmm, that's interesting. Why did I give up? Why did I give up? Um, Probably and I gave up probably about day twenty. I just couldn't couldn't hack it. You know, I said, "Why? Why did I give up?" So I realized, "Aha! Uh -huh. As uh, attach your challenge to something that will motivate you." Mm -hmm. And what did I? And what did I say? I said I would attach my challenge to the plan, raise some money. Yeah, and that was what kept me going. Yeah, that's what kept me going to finish the 90 day challenge you know and they say after 30 days it becomes a habit yeah mm. and you just keep pushing you just keep pushing but you've got to have a motive and the motive the motive for me was raising the awareness of the food bank and um raising funds for the food bank and that just got me going yeah mm. and it was the motivation yeah because when i started there was no there was there was no there was there was no mission to it yeah but after the 20, when I stopped and I wondered, why did I stop? Why did I give up? And I said, there was no mission with the activity. So I said, you know what? I'm going to attach a mission with the activity. And the mission was to raise funds for the food bank and to raise the awareness of the food bank. And that was it. That made it happen. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. 
So, okay. So, will we be getting more sporting challenges? Uh, oh, totally. The- totally, totally. Like, now, I'm kind of like... Uh, I'm kind of like uh, shackled down, do you know what I mean? You know, <laughs> locked down. I can't even go out, you know, and uh, and I just can't wait to start something again because usually in the summer, that's when I do it. That's when I get it. Yeah. It's going and go all out for it, you know. And um, I'm hoping to to obviously. I mean, we we we're definitely going to do more challenges, you know. I'm just hoping for this to to calm down. This whole uh, lockdown to calm down. And um, definitely we'll be back at it straight away, you know, because I mean, before that we did the uh, homeless, uh, we, we did the slip out at the uh, Maystone football ground. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't know if you remember that we, uh, we did a slip out at the Maystone football ground, helping um, raise the awareness of youth homelessness and empowering um, youths um, through, um, through sports. Yeah. yeah. And um, that was really good. You know, we, um, we also had, we were supposed to have a presentation uh, two weeks ago um, at the football ground with, with a new sponsor coming to help us uh, mm. push the food bank and the, the homeless um, the homeless charity. But obviously, all the matches were cancelled, so we had to draw back. But um, we're going to come back strong. We're going to come back mm. strong after this. We're going to come back strong. We've got a lot of things planned and ah. um, we revealed when we come back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh- Quick question: How many people did the like uh, the staying out on the street at the homeless for the homeless charity at me? We had about there must have been at least twenty five people. So there were at least twenty five, and they were mainly business leaders, um, mm. families, uh, football fans. You know, um, so there were twenty five people that slept that slept uh, rough that night. Yeah, yeah myself yeah uh, excellent excellent yeah. like if you want to do a challenge uh why don't like why don't you do either push-ups or skipping over the next uh, i should like, do uh, no i well, should do now uh, now you're now you're saying that you know i, I see your challenge every morning uh <laughs> doing that pre- um sit is it press-ups you're doing a lot of press-ups for um for, uh, ptsd the US, the suicide um prevention prevention charity yeah and um, i look at that and i say wow that is absolutely awesome and i think you're on day 67 or day, day... Uh, no day 94 wow wow, so, wow. Yes. awesome awesome awesome, <laughs> awesome. and i yeah. think that's kind of inspired now you're saying that that's kind of inspired me to think what can you do indoors that you, mm. you really don't have to go outdoors you actually can do it indoors so yeah that's food for thought for me. Food for thought, I and mean, I will have to think about that. But well done for what you're doing. I think uh, it's awesome. Uh, you know, I really kind. think it's awesome. I mean, is, is there some? Is there something got you into thinking uh, about that? Or? Now, basically, a couple of years ago, I did like I did uh, twenty two push ups a day for yes. uh, about two hundred and twenty two days. Year before that, it was like twenty push ups uh like 22 push-ups a day for 30 days and you nominated someone but i was like okay when i did it again i was like okay if i can raise awareness like mm. i don't I, I don't do it where it's been spawned and being sponsored or anything like that just yeah. so it, it's like try to keep it fresh in people's minds minds but, yes yeah it's one of those things where you look at a person who's either served or been like a veteran or basically who is like a public service worker, fire, yes. like fire, police, um, ambulance, or like in the medical staff, you don't, yes. you only see them in times of crisis or where they've been highlighted. But when mm. the cameras are off, you, they tend to drift away. And yes. with regards to many a military like veteran, they yes. do become quite a lot of the nation's homeless or yes. the nation's forgotten so yes. doing that little bit i can hopefully bring awareness and if it helps motivate someone to go okay let me help a volunteer or take that little bit of time to wow. like, look at those like look at those people uh wow and, uh, i hope it helps a little uh I, I, no i think it does i think it I think it absolutely does because I mean, what I see, I mean, when you told me about the statistics, you know, I thought when I saw the statistics, I thought, gee, that is crazy. Mm. You know, didn't even think about it, you know? And I think what that does is it's like you said, I mean, it's, 
I mean, some people do just to raise their awareness, you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes a lot of people, a lot of us forget about these things, you know, that there are other people out there who are going through this, these times, you know, and mm -hmm. seeing that done, it's just raised the awareness of 22 people commit suicide every day, you know, and I thought, wow, that is freaky, you yeah. know. And it just raises your awareness. So well done to you. Absolutely well done and great job. Great job. No, thank you very much. That is very kind of you. But yeah, I would say with regards to uh, these challenging times, I think um, I, I think there are a lot of people who were invisible uh, to like to our society around mm. the world, which yes. I think it's become a little bit more like clear that okay yeah there are people out there which have been forgotten there are people who have like do need help out there mm. and when like when stuff has been taken away or restricted because mm. of like one either our own greed or just basically panic and fear yes. it kind of goes like i think people have taken a little bit more thought there are uh, i would say there's an element of people which have taken a lot more thought about what they're doing and yes. their actions. Um, last night, uh, you had, uh, I don't know if you took part, but people went outside and did the clapping for- Clapping, MLK. yes, yes, yes. Yeah, uh, if you, like, um, the amount of times there's been, win like a number of years, there's been, the NHS has been pushed to such a level at winter time uh, that you go, right, uh, the NHS is about to be broken, the NHS is about to be broken, but no one clapped for them then, you know. No, very it, true. Uh, no, very true. I, like no one, like quite a lot of the attitude was people, like yeah, they're just doing their job, right? Yes. Now. <laughs> like, oh gee. Yeah. Oh gee. And when you think about it, when if you're in trouble, like, and you need medical attention, you need the NHS. You oh, big time. You need a nurse. Big time. And like I think, yeah, uh, showing up, uh, that like, showing appreciation these couple of times, yeah. I think it's long overdue. Oh, uh, big time! And yeah, I think going forward, I think we, I think we as a nation, um, all and individuals need to be like a little bit more, have a show a little bit more gratitude uh, to them. Um, basically, I think we should show a lot, a little bit more gratitude to the fact that we're healthy. Uh, well, yes. And yeah, and totally agree. Uh, so it's like yeah, uh, I see. I see the, I see the, I see the pain of our circumstance, but I can see the sort of uh, possible opportunity going forward uh, with this to help, hopefully, make some of us better. Not, I know. Totally agree. To totally agree. To and 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 I tell you something. One one of the things that I learned. I mean, I I'm very big on um, on learning about leadership. Yeah, mm. and one of my big um, big uh, mentors, John Maxwell. Yeah, okay. he's a leadership guy. I mean, and um, he's, he's a lot of leadership. And he says, and one of the things he said in a crisis, the best, the in a crisis, the best value comes out of you. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a crisis, there always the best value. And for me, I, I I reflected on that, and I said, what's the best best value of you? He says, and it's, it says leaders, leaders always lead from the front. They don't lead from the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One of the things that I reflected on is that um, I asked myself, in these times of crisis, what's the best value of me? Yeah, the best value of me where, um, where I'm leading from the front is giving, is giving, is the food bank for me. It's going out and helping the community, is leading from the front, yeah, and saying, we've got to help the community, we've got to give back, yeah. Mm. Got to do more to make sure that families, single parents that can't take the kids out to shopping, you know, they get the food at the doorstep. They can pick the food. We can drop some vouchers through the letterbox. Yeah, mm. for me, that's the um, that's the value in a crisis. Yeah, so the best the so a crisis brings out the best value in you. It could be, I mean, it could be, I mean, that's for me. That's what what I think is brought out for me. You know, people mm. have it in different do it in different ways. You know. But like I said, and as a leader, you've got to make sure that you're leading from the front, yeah, not mm. from the back, yeah. And uh, it's, it's like you said, um, this whole um, lockdown, this whole um, virus thing yeah, going on, it's it's changing the way we think and it's bringing, for some of us, it's bringing the best value out of us to saying, how can we help 
in a crisis. Yeah, how can mm. we live in a crisis? And that's that's what it does. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, no, I think uh, one of the things I know people sometimes are stuck with the sort of day to day because right now it's in the thick of it. Um, I would say, yeah, uh, it's going to take a, a little bit of faith on our parts to sort of like look beyond this right now to go, right, what, what's it going to be like in a year's time? How are we going to make it? Okay. I, I think I, we lost you there. Yeah, I, I dropped out for a second. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't know what happened there, but nevertheless, we're back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, as I was saying, I think it's going to take uh, many of us to look to the future, make those sort of future plans rather than sort yes. of like stay in the thick of it. I know it's hard to do that, but yeah. Uh, what I'll just say, I'm, I'm in many respects, I'm already like jumping ahead, dealing with what I need to do with the day to day now, but I'm. Or I'm already planning to go. This is what I'm going to be doing a year from now. Two awesome. years from now. Absolutely years from now. awesome. Uh, because Great. yeah, if I think if anyone's like, oh, no, there's no, there's not going to be no future. There's not going to be anything bright in this. And it's mm. like that. Look, I'll just simply go look back through history. Uh, what yes. the race has gone through. There's been yes. worse times. There's been terrible times. Horrific yes. times. Yes. But yeah, endured. So yeah. yes. We'll bounce back. We'll yeah. bounce back. And and I always, I have this uh, saying. I've got this friend of mine, and um, he always tells me that um, we, we 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 share we sh we, we share uh, communication. We talk at least once a week. And he always tells me he's a very successful entrepreneur as well. And he tells me that the, a storm never lasts. A storm always mm. goes by. Yeah, it never it never stays and stays still. Yeah. yeah. So you have that in your head and you think yeah the storm will pass yeah uh you just got to keep reminding yourself yes that we're going through this yeah but at the end it's go we're going to come out of it you know and mm. the key mm. thing is are you going to be ready to when you we come out of it yeah that's what you got to start thinking about mm. and that's the mindset that i've got is when we come out of it are we going to be ready yeah and it's not going to last yeah Mm. yeah no no i agree um like the whole thing is um with uh, i know a number of companies like uh how can I, that thankfully there's the government scheme where they're putting people on furlough rather than mm. like people being like made redundant so yes. like so basically when we do get past this time there is an opportunity yeah. rather than people like starting like with a lack, like a lack of staff or whatnot, they can just basically yes. step back in and yes. hopefully be able to get back, uh, yes. like running full steam. Now, um, yeah, um, I like this is the thing. I hope you haven't had to put anyone on furlough or anything. Can you like run? No, this no, for us, I mean, that's a good thing. I mean, we've been very lucky, mm. you know, um, in our business, um, um, because we provide also social housing, yeah. The social housing arm of our business has kind of um, the demand has gone high, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, because obviously the government is trying to house a lot of people, you know, and they're saying you've got to house people. So, so we've been we've been quite lucky and blessed with mm -hmm. that. Yeah? That we've got people that we, we that uh, require our service. So, but that's been good for us. That's been really good for us. Uh, on the other hand, I mean, we've got the construction side where people are still working, yeah? The mm. construction people are still working, so it's given us another um, angle of our business where there's revenue, yeah? So, you know, I mean, I always, I, I, I learned this lesson many, many years in business, is that in business, you cannot put your eggs in one basket, mm. yeah? If you look at Uber, yeah? You've got uh, Uber, then you've got Uber Eats, yeah? And I yeah. find yeah. now what they're telling us is that Uber Eats is absolutely booming, yeah? yeah? Because a lot of people are doing are sitting at home and ordering uh, their food online, yeah. And Uber Eat is doing all of that business, yeah. Mm. I and mean, if you look at, um, I think they call it Lyft. There's Lyft, Lyft, Lyft. Yeah, uh, American car. I think I don't know if they're in the UK, but um, they're similar to Uber. They're in the same market yeah. as Uber. But um, the analysis. I mean, I was reading an article, and Lyft doesn't have. Uh, they don't have a delivery service. If from from what I read from this article, yeah. yeah. 
Uber has got a delivery service, yeah, Uber Eats, mm. yeah. So you see, that's the game. You got to, you cannot afford to put your eggs in one basket. Yeah. yeah. Look at the likes of um, Airbnb. Yeah. Airbnb has got one business, one business, and that's accommodation. They don't do anything else. Now yeah. the government, now with all of this, look at that. Look at the heat they've taken. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. And like you know what? With that, we works as well. So you know what I mean. Look at we works. Yeah. So like this is the thing. I think there are like. This, I think, is going to be the sort of burning time for, I would say, many an unfit company out there. Oh, totally. Uh, because, oh, totally. like, um, I, I don't know how some of these companies beforehand, like, for example, WeWorks, was actually getting on by and making its money because now uh, no one can actually go to their property. And no run, one's going. Yeah. And they run a month-to-month subscription. Uh, wow. Like, yeah. Wow. So if it was wow. me and I was like a entrepreneur, uh, like working by myself, like one, I know for myself, if it was me, I would just work from home and just totally. do that, that totally. because 400 pounds a month or 450 oh, big time. Or one, you need to one, save one, that. Yeah, that could go to something else. It could get more equipment or get a little bit more advertising yes. yeah, along that lines. But if I needed to do that sort of environment where I needed to mix, socialize with people in that particular in a particular setting or had to get people into an office um yeah that that 400 that 400 pounds to 500 pounds or whatever the subscription might be would be the first thing i would be like i'm cutting that right now <laughs> uh that you know what i mean especially right now it'd be a case of yeah groceries uh groceries rent or whatnot you know oh i think hello wait a second are you still there Chuckers? Oh no. I think you're frozen. Oh, wait, wait. Ah, you're back. Yeah, I'm back again. I don't know what happened. Yeah. yeah no, yeah. It might be a case of, yeah, demands on the internet all around, but. That's what I'm supposed to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. Uh, yeah, but you're I, all right. Hmm? I yeah. mean, you are right with regards to WeWorks, you know. I mean, look at that model, yeah. Mm. That model, they all, I mean, you had to go into a building and do your business and all of that stuff. And you said it's monthly subscription. Yeah. Now, most people are going to get used to working at home. I mean, as an entrepreneur, why go pay 400 quid when I can use that somewhere else? Yeah. It's, you got to think about that. You yeah. Know? Never put your eggs in one basket. Mm. That's what I always believe in. Absolutely. Have a diverse portfolio. And yes, you will go far uh, if you don't. Yeah. Uh, But I would just say, um, I think the term is zombie company. Uh, Mm. Zombie, yeah. And I think when more of those sort of zombie companies, those entities uh, go goodbye, I think it'll be, I think it'll make things a lot healthier for Mm. the sort of like business market. Uh, But uh, it cus- comes down to like I don't want to see anyone lose their job, no, but, no, totally no, totally but no. I think it's uh, always a dodgy thing if you're in a sort of uh, a dodgy company, which you know what I mean, which relies on getting that next round of funding rather than yes. actually go okay, let let's make it profitable. And look, you're doing stuff helping, like you know what I mean, social housing. But you, you're making sure it does turn a profit so you can then do more social housing and then more social housing yeah. rather than sort of like, go, okay, we've got to get round to our next round of funding, blah, 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 blah do everything, playing that game. And yeah. you don't have anything substantial at the end of it. So, yeah. Yeah, no, totally. totally. And, that, and that's one of the key things, like for us, as I said, I mean, we, we, we are not funded by, I mean, we, we've been self-funded since we started. Yeah, and we built we built it slow and steady. Yeah, we looked at um, various streams of income. We've looked at social housing. We've looked at um, service departments. We've looked at the construction um, accommodation services. Mm. So we've looked at hospitals providing accommodation in hospitals. So so we've got various arms that we've kind of like um, structured our revenue from. Yeah. And um, one of the key things that I advise um, body and entrepreneurs is that when you start, don't stick with one thing, yeah? Don't stick with one 
one uh, one angle of revenue because we've gotten hit before we've absolutely gotten kicked you know mm. and um, and we got kicked when we were in social housing we started social housing and um a new um, uh, a pension fund company funded funded pension company came in and provided accommodation across kent and they 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 literally had all the money they slashed all the prices down we can't compete with a pension fund company you know mm. so and we thought you know what we're just gonna let's i mean they drove a lot of people out of business you know we just stuck it by the feet and what we did was say let's what's the next thing that's when um, airbnb came up and everyone was talking about airbnb and yeah, we thought, yeah. we're go to that market you know and we moved on to that market very quick and fast yeah mm. and we dominated the market in kent with uh, service departments yeah so we built we built the business on uh, service department in Kent, yeah. Mm. And um, so, so what I'm just trying to say, pretty much, is that um, you cannot rely on one thing, you know. When yeah. You that, I mean, we made a we made a lot of money on social housing, but when we when 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 everyone jumped on the boat and and wanted to have a, a piece of the cake, you know, we thought mm, this is gonna this is gonna go down soon. Yeah. down to another thing you know and um one of the key things i always tell people is um spread your spread your investment spread your investment mm. think of something else because it's not going to last for long <laughs> you know yeah, yeah, yeah. someone else other people are going to come and have a want to have a piece of the cake you mm. know and um establish yourself wherever you are so that you know you, you when even anyone big comes in at least you still have a market share. Yeah, they're just not going to kick you away. Mm -hmm. You can still have a market share, but look at all our opportunities. Like I explained with, with Uber, Uber Eats, mm -hmm. Uber Services. Uber Services now are probably struggling. Yeah, the cab service is struggling. But Uber Eats has gone up now. You know, demand has gone up. So that's the same model, really. Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. excellent, excellent. Um, yeah. Uh, if there was, if there was three things you could change within yes. your sector, what would those three things be? I think um, I've, I think it would be one would be regulation. Yeah, mm -hmm. we need more we need more regulation in the industry because what we are finding is that every time they can hurry now is coming into the industry and yeah. setting up the they setting up stuff and setting up accommodation services, but um, they have no experience mm. with, with, with doing that. Yeah. Um, so I think we need more regulations. Yeah. The second thing I would say is that we need um, we probably need more support. Yeah. More of the the banks. You know, more of lenders helping um, firms like us to say, you know, what we're going to help build what you're doing. For example, in Kent, what we tend to find, like I always tell people. It's never, uh, people don't buy property, people buy experiences, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyone can do property, you know. You can go to the high street, you can pick up 20 properties if you want, yeah. But you cannot buy experiences, yeah. So what we are, what I'm an advocate of is that we sell experiences. For example, you see me on LinkedIn telling you how, what there is in Kent, how good Kent is, mm -hmm. how many attractions mm -hmm. there are in Kent, how, um, London is only 35 minutes away. How can't you from Kent, you can go, you can, you can go into um, France, you can go into Belgium, you know, so I talk about Canterbury, I talk about historic sites. See, that's experiences. You can't buy those experiences, yeah? Yeah. And um, it would be nice if we had more funding, more people putting more, I uh, mean, or local authorities putting funding into helping us to, um, to spread the word, you know, that, um, Kent is an experience. Yeah, no, that would be a great uh, uh, second thing I would say. The third thing I would probably say is, um, I would probably say we need uh, we need more networks. Yeah, especially in, in Kent. I mean, when I mean network, network in hospitality. Yeah, more specific. Mm. Yeah, a group of network people in hospitality come together and say, how can we make this better? How can we work together to make Kent a brand, yeah. Mm. I mean, we can't compete with London. London is a big global brand, you know. That's massive. Yeah, you know? uh, yeah. I would say with London, there it's not just London itself which is pushing itself. 
which it is in a big way. But mm. I would say it's sort of like individual corporations as oh, well, which are like pushing it as well. Oh, big uh, time. So big time. yeah, I can understand why London is kind of the juggernaut it is. And I basically, yeah. if you take a look, say at Manchester as well, yes, it, that's pushing itself as well. Oh, it pushes itself. Yeah, big mm. clubs, the big clubs, Man City, Man United. Yeah. you know, you you the BBC going there, you know. Yeah. Uh, that pushes the brand, you know. So mm. for us, we need that that kind of support network. Well, what can we bring to Kent? I know there's some few organizations like Locate Kent that mm -hmm. brings businesses to Kent, but we need more of that. Okay? Mm. The brand Kent out there. Now, maybe like maybe they should start some type of well, I was gonna say, yeah, start a like sort of a networking event where like you get some like key business leaders throughout the whole county coming together uh basically uh start an expo where like you like start calling in people throughout like throughout europe the world or throughout the rest of the country to come down like so you can like sort of highlight what kent's positives are as you mentioned 35 minutes away from london like yes. being able to go to france or brussels like yes. in a blink of an eye um yes. doing things that way um I, I would say do a podcast but that's that's another thing but yeah. i know, uh, I know. Yeah. doing a po yeah. yeah doing a podcast more of that needs to be thing. done and more like i said like you rightly said i mean london organizations big companies pwc oh. um goldman sachs they push the brand of london you know mm. london doesn't really have to do that much you know but if you look at kent we have to do more we have to get publicity we have to tell people why kent is better why rents are cheaper here yeah. why that fast train goes into france you know we have to sell that more, you know. And like you said, if we get more people coming and um, coming together and pushing that brand, you get you get people hearing about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, if if Kent's filled with a, a little bit more people like yourself, uh, mm. with that sort of uh, entrepreneurial spirit, but that yes. sort of keen thinking about looking at the opportunities and the yes. sort of loopholes which you can most probably get through. Yeah, yes. I think that would be a good thing. Oh, I massively. Think yeah. Massively. I mean, that's what I'm saying. When you see me on LinkedIn, I'm pushing the brand Kent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't talk about my, I don't, we don't talk about how, I mean, very, I mean, the housing is probably 5% I talk about. I push the brand Kent. Yeah. yeah. I tell you what's happening great in Kent, what people are doing in Kent, what new investments are coming to Kent, what are the new opportunities in Kent. I sell the brand Kent. Yeah. Mm. I don't sell houses. Yeah. Houses are just a sideline. Anyone can sell houses, yeah? Okay, but I sell experiences, yeah? I tell people about experiences and that's what I believe it has more longevity, yeah? And it obviously increases the value of the area and it increases the value of what you sell, yeah? Experiences. Perfect. I like that. I like that. Like, what, are, okay. Last, last question. Like, yes. okay. In these lockdown times, uh, yes. what, what either TV show or book yes. would you recommend someone awesome. to either watch or read right now? Awesome! I love that. I love that. Um, I tell you what. Let me let me show you. There's a book that um, I don't know if it's on my shelf. Uh, just give me two seconds. I can give you two seconds. Ah, uh, yes. Good times, ahoy! <laughs> So if you look at it, this is this is my number one best book. I don't know if you can see. Ah, uh, Shoe Dog, Phil Knight. Shoe Dog. Yeah. Shoe Dog. Oh yeah. yeah. No, that is an excellent book. This I, is my book. Yeah. This is the book that um, I will highly recommend. You know, yeah. I would highly recommend. I mean, I'm reading it the second time now. You know? Okay. Yeah. And, um, you got to read this. You got to read this because this is deep stuff. You know. Yeah. This is where hunger is. You know, oh, yeah, passion. no. But this way, uh, that was my running companion. I, get, I download audio books from. Oh, Google. really? Yeah. Oh, wow. So it was wow. my running companion, I think, through December. I, did, I listened to it twice. But, really? Uh, yeah. But the journey he took uh, awesome. to get with it. And yeah, it cut, uh, I would say that book, it, especially, especially with today's times, 
the importance of cash flow could not be sort of underlined totally. so many times. It's like, yeah, the cash flow, totally. the cash flow. It's like, totally. like um, selling millions of shoes, but yet the cash flow was so tight. Totally. So yeah. <laughs> you're, like, you're going, oh, you're doing well, you're doing fantastic. But it's like, yeah. mm. and that's like, oh, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. Totally, totally. It, if, some, if you don't understand cash flow is king, but after yes. reading that book, yes. Don't go Not into enough. business by yourself. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Find someone who knows that and then go into business with them as a yes. partner. And that's like, right. Yeah. But totally. Shoot off. Totally. Uh, totally. No, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. You know, can't, um, can't, can't tell enough about it. Can't tell enough about it. You know, so it's, um, it's absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. You know, um, <laughs> when I read it, I mean, it blew my mind away. You mm. know? absolutely blew my mind away so it, it's it's the best book if that if that if that answers the question in these times this is the best book uh excellent i took like what was your takeaway i took away cash flow but what was your takeaway from that I, I, for me i took away hunger i took mm. away passion mm. i took away wow this is someone who is hungry mm. you know and like you said cash flow was another thing yeah big 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 um you, uh on the numbers and you know so what i took away is someone who is hungry yeah <laughs> you know mm -hmm. out of it yeah uh, there was one other takeaway like what i what you tend to find in today's sort of entrepreneurial market yeah people are trying to do it so damn fast like it has to be done like tomorrow and i guess i you see them go 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 like yes. to get like get uh, launch the IPO, get that big yes. sort of paycheck and yes. away. Uh, yes. with, with that book especially, it was like it was like a fourteen year journey. Totally, totally. fourteen years, and like it, the company went from Blue Ribbon, then to Nike. Uh, totally. Like then it was a case of then they started to get out there and like you know what I mean launch the IPO. Totally. It's awesome. I mean, like I always tell people, if you're in business for the short term, it's a business opportunity. Mm. But your real business is for the long term. Yeah. yeah. So I tell people. Oh, Jacques. Yeah. I, Jacques, I think I might have uh, uh oh. No, 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 no. Oh, like Did I it? missed, like you, you totally froze on me for a right, moment. So what I was saying is that you've got to be there for the long term. Yeah. You've got to be there for the long term and not be there for a business opportunity. Yeah. Mm. That's the key. Yeah. You've got to stick at it. You know, uh, most businesses, like I said, you don't make money your first year. You know, you just got to stick at it. And like I said, this book is a book. I mean, it's a book I'm reading in this period because it opens your mind up to possibilities, you know, absolutely awesome. Absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. Um, yeah. Chuckers, please tell the people where they can find you on, on social media or that. Like, yeah. However you okay. do your main Brilliant. media. Um, so, um, so you can actually find me. Um, so obviously my name is Chuck spelled C H U K S. Mm -hmm. So if you go onto LinkedIn, you can just type in C H U K S. My son name is U W A E C H I A. And I'm the CEO of Kent housing. You can type, um, um, like I said, I repeat again, the name is C-H-U-K-S. It's Chuk's son name is U-W-A-E-C-H-I-A. -E yep. Go into LinkedIn or Facebook. You'll see me there and just link up with me and um, keep up to date with what I do. Excellent. I'll, I'll also put in the link in the description as well. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah, I'll, I've got your website as well. So I'll just put that as well. Fantastic. khhomes.co.uk. Kenthousing.co.uk. Okay, kenthousing.co.uk. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I'll put that down as well. And yeah, yeah, brilliant. Definitely get you linked up. And yeah. Fantastic. Fantastic. Awesome. Uh, well, yeah, got to say thank you uh, very much for your time today once more. Like, yeah, your positivity has been legendary. Like, yeah, your insight has been fantastic. And yeah, I definitely look forward to seeing what. Thank you, Mwewa. Well, I appreciate you. Definitely oh. appreciate you. Oh, like, definitely. Yeah. I bet. Can you can you give me two minutes? I'll take a picture so that I can I can send it to my group. 
I, I had a, a call with you today. Okay, you know? no eyes. Yeah. Look, I, yeah. I won't post. With my, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Awesome, awesome. We well, thank you very much. I appreciate this call. You know, yeah, um, it's been a great call. You've, like I said, you inspire me every morning with your workouts. I see you, and I think, gee, come on, Chooks, you got to go out now. You got to go out now. Ah, uh, yeah, so don't, really don't appreciate you. And um, I like your saying that you, you call us a life warriors. Is it life warriors? Life warriors, yeah. The life warriors. I love that tag. Uh, life warriors. You know. So no, keep up the good work. Keep up the good work, my friend. Absolutely awesome. Absolutely, and yes, I appreciate your time today. And yeah, I look forward to like I look forward to helping you definitely in the future. And thank yeah, you. I'm, thank you. I, I look forward you. to the day when we meet each other face Again, to face. Exactly. Thank you very much. Thanks you. No, I appreciate no you. Thank you. Okay. Cheers. No problem. Bye -bye. Just you. stay there. Stay yeah. there. Right moment. Okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna end this right here. Thank you, everyone. Thank Good you very much. Time. Thank you, Mua.